So we're on part three of my Almost Famous Friends series, and today I have someone super special for you. What if you took a screenwriter and a DJ and someone who cooks really well and mixed them all up together? You'll find out in a second. Welcome to Yester Kitchen. I'm Jill and if you love retro food and nostalgia, you are in the right place. So today is part three of my Almost Famous Friends series and I want you to meet Ian Shore. Hello. Or DJ Bamboom. Or Panda. Take your pick. Any of those will suffice. And we love him. He's um, been a friend of mine for a, uh, about a decade now? Almost 10 years now, yeah. Wow. And so I had to bring him into the kitchen. So today, we are gonna make... We are gonna make uh, Bucatini Carbonara. Uh, this is one of my favorite dishes. It's the first dish I ever learned how to make uh, when I was maybe 12 years old. Uh, I've got a lot of good memories attached to it and felt like it would be the perfect thing to make on this wonderful show of Jill's. I love it, and this man can cook. He cooks all kinds of amazing things. So, um, Ian is from Utah. But this dish is not from Utah. No, uh, I, I grew up in Park City, Utah, up in the mountains. And uh, the thing about you know growing up in a, a state like that is there's not a lot of awesome food being made specifically from that state. Like I, like if you look up the the biggest iconic Utah foods, it's things like a lot of Jello and uh, jelly beans and uh, and like marshmallows and salads. So. Uh, <laughs> Growing up, uh, I you know tried to experiment a lot with food, and the first dish that I ever fell in love with, just because it was so easy but had such a wonderful flavor, was uh, spaghetti carbonara. And when um, when I first learned how to make this, uh, I would have like you know friends sleeping over, uh, and we'd be staying up all night watching movies. So you know around one o'clock in the morning, we would come out. I would sneak into the kitchen, make up a big bowl of this. And uh, th this was kind of like my, my first taste of being a chef. And it's, uh, I can't, actually, I've never had this, so I'm super excited. So I'm gonna try it today. But besides cooking, Ian is an amazing DJ. Take a look. And he just, he goes by the name DJ Bamboom. And he's just, he's just magic. And he's on SoundCloud. So if you have a chance, uh, go find him. Yeah. I'll put the link down in the description. And on top of that, He's a screenwriter, and you know what? He does it for a living. Go figure. <laughs> so he's got actually a really exciting movie that will be coming out that we'll talk about at the end. But at first, we're gonna start talking about fettuccine, not fettuccine, sorry, bucatini. Bucatini, right. yes. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna need is we're gonna need to make some pasta and boil some eggs. Uh, yeah, we're gonna make uh, some soft boiled eggs. We're gonna boil the bucatini and uh, then we're going to uh, get this all whipped up together. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cook our pasta in salted boiling water for six minutes, and yeah. we're gonna cook our eggs in yeah. boiling water for six for minutes as exactly well. exactly six minutes. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and cook that, and we're gonna come back with everything, and we'll see you right there. Okay, so our pasta is cooking, and our eggs are cooking, and while we're doing that, I've just gotta ask Ian, because he's mainly a writer, so what inspired you to write? Uh, I think that for me, the, the, the biggest thing was, was growing up with movies. Like uh, my hometown uh, is the, the home of the Sundance Film Festival. And so I was going to that festival every year starting at age 10 and watching terribly age inappropriate films starting around that age. And uh, it was always so exciting being around all these young filmmakers flooding into my town. You could always spot them because they're all wearing black. And, oh, really? Uh, yeah, oh. like people from LA wear nothing but black when they, when they come to cold places. So <laughs> uh, I would, I too would dress all in black and go out to meet the filmmakers. So getting to be in that environment was really inspiring. And uh, so I, I, I wrote my first feature when I was 12. Uh, wrote one per year every year after that. and. It was. It felt like playtime to me. It was. It didn't. It never, it never felt like work, and for the most part, it still doesn't. That's awesome. That's and it has. 
His scripts are very, can be very dark and scary. And then you look at this <laughs> Say that. And, um, <laughs> and you like wonder how it justifies. But you were saying like, because you're so happy, you can oh, go to another place. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I, uh, you know, I, I feel like when, uh, when I'm writing my movies, like, you know, I, I love the same type of stuff that I loved when I was a kid. Like I, I love, you know, car chases and explosions and aliens and robots and, and all the stuff that like, you know, 12 year old boys love. Um, and because I, you know, get to live a relatively calm life, it means that I can go these chaotic places in my imagination. And they do. They do. Okay, so, a couple things have happened. We've cooked our pasta. It probably went for about seven minutes, right? Just yeah. Like a good al dente. And if you don't know about al dente, watch my fettuccine alfredo video. We'll talk all about it. And we also took the eggs out of the water. We put them in an ice bath for about a minute and Ian painstakingly took the shells off. <laughs> and now they're just sitting in a bowl waiting. But you know how to cook an egg and you know how to take shells off. Don't run them out of hot water, the eggs are too soft for that. Yeah, okay. um, so now we get to the fun part. Uh, fun part! I'm going to um, take my eggs and I'm gonna take my Parmesan and I'm going to mix them together. Oh, here, let's put them here so we can mix. Okay. And I'm gonna mix these together while I whip the eggs with a fork. This Gradually cool. adding a little more Parmesan. To get nice and frothy. It's gonna look like there's a ton of cheese in there, but that's exactly what you want. I was telling Ian that I've tried to make it twice and it didn't go so well, so I'm just as interested as you are. Uh, and once we got a nice... Oh, I like that. Thank you. Once we got a nice mix going in there, now it is time to take the bugatini out of its water. Okay, so we'll put that here. And this is the most crucial step. The idea is that you want to take this out while it's still nice and hot, get it in your bowl, put a little bit of olive oil on it, cover it with the sauce, coat everything up, and just do that before anything gets too cold or too dry. So there's that. <laughs> and I like bucatini because that's the one where there's like a hole through the center of the noodle. And so it like just picks up more of the sauce. Yeah. Instead of like a, because you probably heard of a fettuccine carbonara or a spaghetti carbonara, but this is like on steroids. Exactly. Uh, I love the uh, the chewiness of, of the, the bucatini. Um, and it's just fun to say. It is fun to say. Let's say it. Bucatini. Oh wait, you go this way. Bucatini. All right, so we've got our bucatini in the bowl. Now we're going to add just a little splash of olive oil there. About maybe a tablespoon? Yeah, I'd say it's about a tablespoon. Okay. And I'm going to take this fork over here. Get this you want me to all... hold the bowl while you do your thing? Will uh, that help? Yeah, thank you. Get that olive oil coated on there. Next, we're going to mix in your cooked bacon. And we had about six slices. Uh, this, this is, uh, yeah, this, this is about five slices of bacon right here. Okay. All cooked crumbly and crumbled up. Yeah, nice and crispy. Oh, that looks so good! So now, we are going to, whoop, pardon me. <laughs> that almost ended so badly. <laughs> now, we are going to pour this beautiful sauce oh. all over the hot pasta. That looks and amazing. And we're going to mix it all in. And essentially he's cooking the eggs. Yes, yeah, so the heat from the uh, the bucatini right now is oh my God. sealing the eggs around the noodles. So it creates this beautiful creamy sauce. And if uh, if you notice that it's a little too dry, uh, like if, if it overcooks a little bit, you can add maybe just a, a little splash of your uh, cooking water and that'll bring it right back to life. Which is why we didn't drain the pasta. Why we just pulled the pasta out of the water. So you have, you always want to keep some pasta water just in case. All right. So then tong it up at the end here. Oh, Give it a nice so flip good. around like that. Oh my god. Now you want to uh, put a little salt and pepper on there. And by the way, this recipe and all my other recipes are on my website at yesterkitchen.com. Just a little pinch. There we go. Oh. Now, when you serve this, let me get this out of your way. Thank you. Get this out of your way. We are going to 
put all this in our bowl here. My wife loves what a messy cook I am. Oh, I love his yeah. wife. Hi, Mac. Hi, love baby. Girl. See, I'm messing up somebody else's kitchen for a change. <laughs> you like that? All right, so then you've got your beautiful bowl right there. All right, uh, now we're going to take our soft boiled egg and we are going to just place it into the pasta bowl and give it a nice stab with the fork. Oh, look at that. And watch all of that yummy goodness come out. Oh my god. You just mix that in all over the pasta. This is you get that nice little ridiculous egg white mixed in there. And once you've got this all mixed together, um, you put a little bit more cracked pepper on top. And this is a soft boiled egg, like you said, not a hard boiled Soft boiled egg. egg, and now you are good to serve. Oh my god. Can I try it? Please, yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Enjoy. I just, I love your cooking, period, but yay. Oh my god. Yeah? That's <laughs> so good. Alright, let me uh... That's so good. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try some of this. And while we're eating this, I know we need a little history on carbonara. So, um, mm. right? Perfect? Yes. <laughs> if I do say so myself. So, the word carbonara. As usual, there's many stories about this and no one's quite sure which one is right. So I'm gonna give you a couple and you can decide. So the word carbonara came from the word carbonaro, which kind of refers to um, coal miners or something to do with coal or a coal burning oven, like pretty much any of a coal burning stove, any of those things. And um, there's a couple legends. One is that, well, there's no really written documented history of this until 1950. So one of the stories is it came out of World War II and when the Germans were um, had Italy, when, it, when the Allies finally freed Italy, the people were starving, you know, it was, they, they really needed help fast, and so what the armies had were powdered eggs and bacon, and they were distributing that, and of course the Italians had pasta and cheese because it is Italy, and they learned how to make this dish. Well, this dish didn't exactly have the name carbonara, they just had this dish that they were able to make after the war. And then the carbonara comes, um, it's, it's talking about the coal miners, right? Since everything carbonaro is related to coal, they said this was a dish that the coal miners in Italy used to eat all the time. It was easy, you can make it deep in the mines and bring it there and it would be fine. Um, and then also, it's right now, it's what I'm learning is it is pretty much one of the number one dishes in dorm rooms in Italy that kids make all the time. Because it's easy, Yeah. as you can see. Exactly. And so this was, yeah, this is fabulous. So definitely give this a try, but before we go, Ian has a movie that's going to start and, production. And, uh, yeah, yeah, in September. Uh, and it's called? Uh, it's called Infinite. Uh, I, I, it's based on a book called The Reincarnationist Papers. Uh, it's about a secret society of people who can reincarnate upon death and retain all their past memories and skill sets. Uh, it's the most fun I've ever had writing a movie. Uh, we're shooting in September in London, um, Bangkok, and New Orleans. It's starring uh, Chris Evans, aka Captain America, uh, and it looks like August 7th, 2020 is when the movie's coming out, so uh, go check it out. This is going to be a big movie. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I'm blushing. <laughs> so definitely try this. Make it for your family. Tell them where the history came from. And I normally don't drink the martini. Ah, oh, I just let it sit here. We got to this time. But we have to. Thank you so much. <laughs> For joining me. Thank you, Jill. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, I cheers Dafter. That's allowed, right? That's allowed, yeah. <laughs> oh, you mean the world to me? Thank you so much for uh, joining me. No, I love you. I love no, you. I love, I love you. you. This was wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> I enjoyed this so much. So did I. And now we got one more, part four. I'm not going to tell you about it. You're going to have to wait and see. You guys have a great day. And if you're looking for some more pasta dishes, I've got some for you right here. Have a good one. Take care.